The inspiration for us was having seen the site, it being a rather difficult site with the, um, the DLR and the XL center and the high voltage cables around, was to think of a way of making a station that was easy. The area around here is, is, is very disparate, different kind of architecture, very open, and we wanted to establish the station as a building. And so the idea was to produce a very gridded uh, plan with a series of standard bays and really produce a structure that was legible as a built form. We had inspiration sort of from a Greek temple with the long row of columns and beams. So the public concourse at the upper level is very, very simply that nature. And then on the roadside, on the Victoria Dock roadside, you have a series of standard six meter bays, 12 of them, producing quite a long elevation on the street. It's a two level station. The concourse is at the upper level the platforms at the lower level, and it's attached at one end to a public bridge, which runs from the Excel Centre through to the VDR, Victoria Dot Road, and then connections to the DLR station at Custom House as well. So the, the access is through a bridge connection from the south or from a lift and staircase connection from the north from the street level. And so the passengers come on the concourse at the upper level. It's about 80 metres long, very clear, open, open-sided deliberately, give a sense of safety and security, being an open feeling. And then there are Within one side of the plan on, on the upper level, there are areas to drop down, escalator stairs, lifts to take you down to the platform level. So a very simple, legible plan, really. The engineering challenges were quite large, not least because of the proximity of the high voltage cables, the working DLR train line, so an active railway line next door to you. So in the end, when we, when we started looking at the, the detailed design, it was working out a way of making the parts that could be built off site, made off site, and brought on site with cranes. And in fact, the contractor produced an A-frame and rails in the track beds on either side of the platform and worked his way from one end to the other. So the components of the station, the columns and beams and floor sections were made in a factory, driven here in a big truck, and then loaded up onto the crane and dropped on site. Very, very simple, straightforward exercise, starting from one end and finishing the other. The pre-cast, pre-made, uh, pre-fabricated systems that were used were key to making the station a smooth operation in terms of build, and also, in the end, we could control the quality of the materials by making them in factory rather than on site. So the amount of wet trays was kept to a limit uh, and progress was very, very good through the build. Concrete is the main component for the structure, for the beams, columns and floors. And then on the upper level, we've used uh, ETFE, which is a, a plastic material as a roof covering, which uh, is very robust and durable, has been used a lot in, in, uh, in different locations like down in Cornwall at the wonderful biodomes. But basically, it's a pillow with two layers of VTFE with a very slight pressurization, so it's, it's slightly pumped up. Um, and that produces a translucent light onto the concourse. And then the floor is granite, a simple hard wearing material that will last forever. This station is above ground and it's the only station which is outward facing, outward looking, naturally lit. And so there's very little requirement to have some of the components that were designed for the tunnel sec sections. We do have ground walls, obviously, we do have some seating. We do have elements of signage and wayfinding and lighting, which are common, but I'd say it was a, a, a fairly low percentage in relation to the underground stations. You'd think the building would be set up to run orthogonal to the railway lines. Everything's at 90 degrees to each other. And we could have built the building in that way, but actually we um, reacted to the existing topography and the, and the road network, which arrives on the railway line at a slight angle of 18 degrees. And so we thought, wouldn't it be nice if we just took that, that original historical line and rotated all the elements of the building around to produce this 80 degree angle. So though the setting out is very uh, logical on six meter bays, everything is then twisted to produce this 18 degree angle, a bit like a fish spine. So everything is slightly rotated to the, to the, to the axis. And so we put that in the floor finishes so that the, all, every piece of paving is a parallelogram. Every column is a parallelogram. All the lines, instead of being orthogonal at 90 degrees, are, are, are 18 degrees off that. And this produces a rather strange effect on perspective because your eyes kind of use uh, lines to dictate distance. And because this is a slightly rotated line, it puts everything in perspective as opposed to in parallel. It's kind of an interesting effect. I like it. It kind of makes the station a little more interesting to look at. Well, the challenges are really the, the, the site context is the, has been the most challenging element. Safety is paramount in relation to live railway lines, the DLR in particular. And so the way the crane worked and the timings of lifting and putting materials on site was carefully managed and orchestrated. 
what we're really looking forward to is having people uh, use it and, and for me to witness that, that um, way they do, because I think, I think I know how they'll do it, but until they do it, I won't know that. And I think for architects, quite a lot of our design is, is, is done in a vacuum in the sense that the end user is part of the plant briefing, but in the end, in a transportation scenario, anybody will use the station and there's no brief for them. They want to get to work or they want to get home. So I think it'll be interesting to see how they circulate. I think with the Elizabeth line in particular, because people know where the exits are at various stations, because the platforms are so long, you'll probably get congregations of people where the, where the exits are, where they get out. So it might be a station where you have clusters of people and no one there because it's the middle of the train or the end of the train. So it'd be quite interesting to, to just see how humans start using the stations. So that's what I'm looking forward to.